we're going to kind of do some additional training on the ins and outs of ZipRecruiter. Those of you that are new getting involved in this, um, hopefully this will be very helpful to kind of set up the account, learn some ins and outs on the account um, as we go through the process. So I guess let me go over kind of an overview initially. Uh, when you log into the ZipRecruiter account, you should have something that looks similar to this. It's got you know six main items that, and your account might look a tad bit different, but six main items that you'll want to kind of be familiar with. Um, we're going to go through initially how to set up the jobs, and we'll talk about hiring companies, delegating users, and then kind of how to manage applicants as they come in to the system. So first things first, if you don't have anything set up, <clears throat> actually we'll jump to the hiring company first. First things first, uh, you'll want to have an actual hiring company. Um, you can break these up into, provided your account allows it, you can break these up into however many hiring companies as you want. The way we have ours set up is the different sub agencies. Um, you know, again, you could have the Smith Master Agency, the Smith Bay Shop Agency, you could have you know, the uh, Holub Agency, whatever it might be, East Coast, West Coast, um, but all of those hiring companies, um, and, and this is important to be able to delegate. So you'll see here that inside of the company itself, we've got the logo, the actual website, which for most of you, the website's gonna be, you know, your Symmetry Financial website, or it'll be ours with Symmetry Financial Group is the ColburnAgency.com. Um, so if you're using everything specific Symmetry, um, that, that would be designated here with cold, with the website. And it's important that you give a description of the actual agency. We've got ours built in to have the glass door reviews. Um, would not be a bad idea to have the glass door link here for symmetry financial group, uh, as well as any other place that someone might go to look for more information about your specific agency, whether that's your Facebook page or whether that's, uh, something on uh, some other kind of landing pages. Um, and the, you know, the description, this is important to just kind of help people know who you're about from an agency standpoint to set up the overall hiring company itself. Um, <clears throat> as you get those hiring companies set up, um, those can be utilized to delegate. You'll see a certain number of jobs here. What we have done is we've delegated specific jobs to each hiring company so that people that are designated users that are designated to that specific hiring company, they only have access to those specific jobs. So here the Clark agency, for example, Christopher Clark, he's got access to those 10 jobs to do what he wants with, to kind of manage them, direct them, um, to deal with the applicants that come in and so on and so forth. Um, and Matt, as we go through some of this, if you've got some questions or if anyone else has any questions, I guess just kind of feel free to jump in so that we can kind of make this as candid as possible as we go through some of it. The hiring company itself, and I'll just show you kind of how it, how it works to add a hiring company. It's not difficult. Um, you know, Bob's insurance company. You know, you add a, uh, we can do that here. We got Bruce Lee. That's a good one. Um, you know, you'd have an actual company, you'd have www dot whatever it is, whatever your website is. I guess we can't use Google. <laughs> the, the Colburn agency dot com. Something like that. I don't know if that's accurate. Um, <clears throat> kind of the definition of why you want to work with, kind of the slogan, and then, um, you know, the description here. And it's not difficult, save company, and that's really it. You want to have a hiring company in order to start delegating users and jobs to uh, those companies. Now I'm going to go back to the landing page. <clears throat> so we've got 12 active hiring companies. The admin on the account has the ability, or anyone with the administration account has the ability to set up users. And so what we have done is you'll see here that we've set up multiple users. Uh, these are all individuals inside of our agency that are recruiting. 
and you can delegate these users to have certain account privileges. So, you know, name, title that you want to have them, the email address. This is the email address that all applications, when people apply on ZipRecruiter, this will be the email address that you'll get notified that so-and-so has applied, okay? Um, you're welcome to have a profile photo if you want, and this is where the actual user on the account will set privileges. Um, if you're an agency owner and you're delegating them out, uh, you'll want to make sure that people do not have full access because then they can delete jobs, add jobs, they can do anything they want and also adjust what you put, what you charge on your card. So I would not, uh, I would, I would have restrict the user until you have an account where, um, where that particular individual is separately billed and separately um, handled from an independent standpoint. And that is something that we will be working on uh, through the process. So all of these are notifications. Yes, we want to have candidate activity reminders. We want to make sure that we're getting messages from the candidates uh, to, the, to the emails and then you'll save them so you can add as many users as possible. Use, it's pretty basic how to set up the users themselves. So once you go to job postings and I may end up having to close a job in order to show how we schedule them because we're using all 75 of our job slots currently. But I want to show you what one of our jobs looks like. Um, let me do this. Let me go into, let me just go into, uh, let's see. So here, this particular agent, so Ron Dilbert, he's got five jobs allocated to him. We'll show you how to set the jobs up, how to manage the jobs, how to respond to them. Um, at what point does ZipRecruiter no longer become involved in the process, which is, I think, important. It be, it's very heavily involved in the very beginning part. As you get them through the initial application, them applying for the job, um, they, there will be a point where ZipRecruiter no longer becomes a part of the process and we shift that over to uh, the landing page that you'll be using. We shift it over to some of the systems that we utilize through agent training. Um, so as you'll see here, the job itself, uh, and I'm just going to edit this particular job. Um, I would strongly encourage that you use very similar job descriptions. Don't get too crazy with the jobs itself, but you'll see here, this is a regional sales manager, the location in which the job is being posted, what category this is sales, business development, full-time, we're looking for a full-time uh, position. And these are kind of the responsibilities. Uh, you can tailor these um, responsibilities of the jobs, qualifications that you're looking for. And it's really important to make sure that in the bottom part of this, we wanna make sure that you've got really kind of the what it is that you're wanting them to do. So we, we want them ideally to be in the Orlando area about four days a week. We want them to attend regular items. Again, this is the expectation, the job description of what it is that uh, we're expecting them to kind of accomplish. And then we've got, you, know, you can always keep your um, whatever, whatever website you're wanting them to go to or have access to uh, at the very bottom as a signature. Uh, we do not have any benefits, so you want to make sure that these particular items are not checked because that would not be accurate. And then we keep all of ours, our compensation range, and it's important to um, have a little, little understanding um, of exactly what this compensation range uh, is. The lower the range, the lower the caliber of, of clients that you're going to probably be or uh, potential agents that you're going to be attracting. But the higher you go, the more challenging it'll be to kind of in incorporate people into what it is that you're wanting. So we have found a good range for the compensation side to be about 125 to 200,000. Matt, did you have a question? No, not yet. Everything looks good. Okay. Um, <clears throat> When it comes to skills, and this is one thing that we, um, that we kind of learn the hard way, it's actually better to have less skills in here 
Um, initially, people are like, well, I want to put as many skills in here as possible because it will attract as many people as possible. Um, I would argue that the less, in fact, this is straight from the account rep with ZipRecruiter, the less you have here, the less specific, the less it filters out people. So uh, even on this particular job posting, I would say this might be a tad bit too many. I don't think you need build rapport. You may not need CRM. You may not need innovation, forecasting. None of those really make a ton of sense. Um, customer service, not necessarily. Agency management, life insurance, license, sales. Those all probably make a good amount of sense. And that would be, you know, again, you don't want to go crazy. You don't want 20, 30, 40, 000, you know, 40 different skill sets. You're not going to attract a lot of people because, again, they're not going to have all 40 skill sets. Um, so hire, this is where it becomes important with the hiring company. This is where we can delegate. This particular job is going to be delegated to a specific hiring company. And this is where you'll, you saw earlier um, there were five or 10 or 15 people or 15 jobs delegated to one particular hiring company, which means that Ron Dilbert has access to the on, only the ones that his user and his hiring company is associated with. All of these are very are, are identical to what our hiring company already says. We already have these delegated in here. And then the bottom part is where we're going to send the candidates to. So when someone applies, um, at the beginning, you might want to make sure that you're paying attention to whether or not your agents and your agency are actually responding. And so you're getting those so that you can see the traffic coming in. But ideally, we want to set this up to be self-managed by the agent or by the recruiter or by the agency owner as they break out. So um, I'm going to make sure that this goes specifically to Ron because it's delegated to him. And we, we don't have a problem with accepting people that don't have resumes. And we'll tell you a little bit why later on. Um, but we, we do have that particular item checked. So then you would save. This job would go live. This is just updating it, okay? It would go live. And as you can see here, we've got 258 uh, visitors so far, five candidates that have not been responded to. And one thing that's important to notice, this job has been active for about a month and a week and a half or two. When you get past 30 to 60 days, <clears throat> it's important that you close the job down and repost it because you want every single time uh, it gets 30, 60 days out, your job no longer becomes first priority on the job postings. And when you repost that job, close it down and repost it, you're just going to get additional visitors. You're going to get additional traction because, again, that looks like or appears to be a brand new job. Um, I'm going to show you once the jobs are posted, I want to walk through a couple of different features in the dashboard that you'll want to pay attention to um, that are important. Now, this, this promote center promote uh, section um, I would encourage you not to pay a ton of attention to it because one, it costs extra. You're welcome to do that if you want. But this is something that depending on how your account is set up, if your manager uh, is the user on it, uh, only, only main account managers that have access, full access to this can actually do the promotion because it costs additional. Um, I have not had a ton of traction on boosting the jobs. It tends to be just an added expense. So there's no need to pay close attention to the promote button. This, this candidates over here is what to me is one of the more, more important things to pay attention to. So all this means is we've had 72 visitors come to this particular job. 21 of them have filled out an application and two of them have yet to be responded to. And a lot of people starting out, they'll say, hey, I want to get this done quick. I want to just do this quick rate where I, I rate the candidate. They're good. They're bad. I like them, whatever it is. Do not do that. Refrain from clicking this quick rate button because it's going to, it's going to really hang up the process of how to properly respond to an individual when they come in and then when they apply to a job. So this particular, just to draw your attention, this particular job is out of the Diaz agency. So this is Omar Diaz's job. I'm gonna show you how to respond to some of these uh, applicants. You'll see here we've got, again, 72 
visitors to candidates. Uh, this would be where you would preview the job, you would you know, edit it, you would post it to LinkedIn, which you can see is an additional cost. All of these things we don't pay a ton of attention to. Um, all I wanna draw your attention to is this two candidates. Whenever someone is not uh, responded to yet, the quicker we respond, the better, because now they're gonna get an email stating what, what we want them to do next, okay? This particular job's got 21 candidates. You'll see here, there's several different things to notice. You'll see some thumbs up on the, on the right side. You'll see some that don't have ratings here. Uh, you'll see contacted. All of these on the, on the bottom are all contacted. Um, I don't honestly know the, the big understanding of great match because I look at some of these and look at what they say sometimes and I don't think they're a great match. But this particular individual probably is a good match because they came from their associate broker at New York Life. Uh, they've got some financial advisory background. Again, they're more connected to the insurance side. And so ZipRecruiter notices that, recognizes it, and says that this person would be a really good potential opportunity. Um, I encourage agents that when you see these, it might be a good idea for you to call that specific person. Send them an email, have them respond, and we'll show you how to do that, but it doesn't hurt to give them a call, look at their uh, resume, and here's the resume. This guy is out of um, Texas. Um, there's nothing wrong with calling this guy and saying, hey, you know, you really look like you'd be a good fit. When can we schedule some time? There's nothing wrong with doing that, but that's an added thing. What we tell our agents is <clears throat> after you've called your leads, after you've set your 10 or 15 meetings, after you've auto-responded to all these individuals, if you want to spend additional time on following up with specific people, there's nothing wrong with doing that, but don't waste time clamoring after specific people. Let the system do the heavy lifting. So I'm going to go back to the top and show you the two that have not been contacted and have applied. Um, in the upper, uh, upper side, the reason why we don't want to rate these is because we want to click on this tab that says unrated. This is going to pull up all the people that in this job have applied, but they have not yet been rated as we like them or we don't like them. So we're going to check all, and this little dialog box is going to pop up that allows us to email the candidates. Now, we have already gone through and created templates, okay, and you can do this as you go through the process, okay? Um, you'll see at the bottom there's a, a tab down here that says add new template. You can add your own. We have templates that are already set up for each agency, each of the hiring companies to basically allow agents, they don't have to think about this, they just have to auto respond. So this particular guy uh, is applying to Omar Diaz's job posting, so I'm gonna go to his, and you'll see here, this is a template, this is very similar to in the uh, you know word processing days where they had automated things that would go in and they would pull, th pull items in and auto insert them. So what we've got is an auto template here that's gonna say, dear, applicant name, and these are all variables you can look at. There's contents here that you can insert into the, the letter. I've received, uh, I've reviewed your job application for whatever position that he applied for at such and such a company. That would say Colburn Financial for us. And we'd like to speak to you about the opportunities. Please schedule an interview on my calendar at, and here is the link that they would need to go to. This would be the landing page link that Matt or Brad might be sending you that you have specific to your agency so that they can schedule a meeting on your calendar. Uh, we can explain the managerial positions, talk about the strategic partnership that we have with the IMO that's referenced in greater detail. Um, on this page is where they're gonna watch the corporate overview. And I'll show you that uh, in just a second. I know everyone's kind of landing page will be a tad bit different. Um, and then obviously best Omar Diaz at uh, Colburn Financial. Um, this bottom part here, we wanna make sure that that's checked to automatically update on the previous page where it says here, no status. When we have this checked at the bottom, it's gonna automatically update to say contacted rather than no status. So all I gotta do is hit uh, send an email to candidates, done. Uh, I'm going to go back. I'm going to click out of this tab. 
It already says at the top, your email is being sent. No big deal. I don't have to do anything on this page anymore. I'm going to click out of this tab and you'll notice here again, it, this is exactly where I came from before. It hasn't changed. I'm going to click on these change ratings. You can do it if you want here on the side. And here's the important part about these ratings. When you do a thumbs up, it's almost like sending them a, a response inside of their ZipRecruiter account as, as a potential employee as, hey, we like what we see. We think that this could be a good match. They're going to get a response from ZipRecruiter saying so-and-so thinks that you'd be a good match here. If we say a thumbs down, they're going to say, hey, so-and-so doesn't, doesn't think so. And, and what ZipRecruiter does is they continue to pull or they decline people based on how you're responding to these ratings. We encourage people to not worry about kind of filtering people out. We like all of them. And let the system on the landing page filter people out as they watch the corporate overview. So it's very important that you auto rate these people once you've sent them an email as that we're interested. And so I usually do this through the auto change here with the change rating because you might have 10 or 12 or 20 people that you're emailing. And instead of having to click on the right side every single time, this is kind of the shortcut to do that. So I'm going to click interested. That's going to auto rate them. I'm going to go back a couple of screens here and show you now if I refresh this screen, both of these two are contacted and they both have ratings. So if I go back a couple more screens to these jobs, this job at the top was the one that we just focused on. You'll notice that it no longer has the notifications in the upper right hand corner, which means that that particular job has been, all of the applicants have been contacted, taken care of, and have been responded to. Um, you got any questions about that or any thoughts or any comments, uh, Matt, about that so far? Um, <clears throat> no, not really. I mean, this is all really good information because I think the, the difference between ZipRecruiter and a lot of other job sets like CareerBuilder, for example, we're reaching out to them, and so they're kind of responding to us. This kind of turns the tables a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you know, we, we put a job posting out there and they're coming to us versus us going to them. So I think um, I can see why you're getting higher caliber people that are probably a little bit more serious even than some of the other job sites out there. So uh, I think this is great. Yeah, it, it, you're, you're exactly right. It is the flip. It's almost like in the insurance world, it's the difference between you being referred to someone and trying to find a reason for them to sit down and buy some insurance from you versus, Hey, let's buy a lead. They're already interested. They're already looking for it. You just got to make sure it's a good fit. Um, it's the same, same correlation that we found inside of ZipRecruiter is these people are looking for jobs. They're interested. They're ready. Um, especially if they apply, go to the landing page link. Um, which I'll show you this particular one. They go to the landing page link and they watch the corporate overview and then they schedule an actual interview. If people are going through that process and they're probably 80, 90% fairly certain. Now you can't, you can't help a few people that decide to go here. They don't schedule the overview. They don't watch the, you know, they don't watch the overview before they schedule. I mean, you're always going to have some people from out of country, things of that nature, but I think we've built the system good enough to filter out some of those through the process as well. So it's really important. To lean Let me just uh, cl clarify some, if you don't mind, Mike, um, I think everyone watching this, watching this video either will have a landing page or if they, ha if they don't have one yet, they'll be getting one. Um, so the process it looks like is actually fairly similar mm -hmm. to career builder or some of the other stuff. It's pretty much driving that, that those interested, that industry traffic to the landing page, they watch the corporate overview. They still schedule auto schedule their own interview. Yep. The biggest difference is zip recruiters. It's a little more hands-on. You got to post the ads. You got to send the email to invite them to take a look at the landing page. But from there, the process is pretty much identical. They go to the landing page, watch the corporate overview, fill out uh, 
I'm assuming they fill out a questionnaire on your landing page like they do on ours. Absolutely. And then they schedule the interview. So a little bit more hands-on, but I think from what the results you guys are seeing, a um, little higher caliber uh, applicants. Yeah. So, and, and like I said earlier, there's a point where you got to lean heavy early on with ZipRecruiter. You got to really make sure you're corresponding, make sure that you're, you know, paying attention to the, um, the, num the traffic, the people that are coming in to uh, ZipRecruiter. There's even, um, and I'm going to have to kind of see if I can find uh, some of the analysis behind the scenes. Uh, we can look at that in just a second, but um, rely pretty heavy on the, the value that ZipRecruiter, they pull in from Indeed, they pull in from LinkedIn, they pull in from, you know, they post all of these jobs in multiple areas. And then once they get that applicant into your job and you respond with an email, now they're going off site. Now we're driving them to the landing page. For us, this is our landing page. And yes, they can click and they can apply. And this is our process. It doesn't mean it's going to be everyone's process, but it's no different. It's they schedule the interview. Uh, when they schedule the interview, um, and your system might look a little different, but they're going to have to fill out the form and respond to just like they're applying for the job. They're applying for why, you know, full time, part time. Are you interested in all of these come pretty much straight from the same questionnaires that I think most of the Smith Master Agency uses, um, you know, questions about felony, things of that nature. We like to add in, you know, are you okay? Are you going to agree to watching the corporate overview? Um, because we call them on the carpet if they don't in the actual interview process. So at this point, once people go to that landing page, now ZipRecruiter is no longer involved in the process. And really, we don't even continue to interact with them through ZipRecruiter. It's all on the front end, making sure that you're putting good jobs up, you're making sure those jobs are getting good traction. You're making sure you're responding to the jobs in a very timely manner. We encourage our agents to do it at least once every day, possibly five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening. It does not take long to correspond back and forth. And I'm going to do this just one more time just to show um, kind of how you can handle more than um, – more than just a couple of emails. I'm going to go in here and see if I can find, and here's a good example. This is one of Chris's uh, postings. There's 10 here. And so all I would need to do or all Chris would need to do is go in, click on the 10 candidates. We're going to do unrated because none of these have been corresponded to. And then we're going to check all of them, email the candidate. This is Chris's, um, job so he would end up picking his own unless he's super super excited and wants to give it to someone else um, but send the email it's going to go to all 10 of them at the same time same standard templated email we'd go back to the previous page change the 10 ratings all at once and you've just done you know 10 applicants that are interested you've sent them all the information now we sit and wait to have them go to the website fill everything out and, and apply so it's a pretty easy, it should not take an individual that long to respond to these, especially if you're teaching every agent that gets into the system that has these accounts. If you've got 5, 10, 15, 20 jobs, it's not difficult to handle 15, 20 jobs to correspond back and forth uh, and keep up with them as long as you're doing it on a regular, regular basis. So how, when you say regular, are you talking once a day, twice a day? We, Does it we encourage, yeah, we encourage them to do at least one in the morning, one in the evening, because you don't know. I mean, it doesn't mean you have to, but at least every day, because you don't want to get 40, 50, 80 jobs, you know, or 80 applicants, and they're sitting there waiting to do something. You really want to stay up on top of it. So the, when you go and email them, I'm assuming that email is probably going out right away. So I would think yep. that if you're doing this at one o'clock in the morning, that may not have as good a results as if you're doing it at, you know, eight or nine or, you know, 11 in the morning or maybe four or five in the evening, I would think. You Absolutely. Might get um, Absolutely. You want to make sure that you're doing it, you know, at, at a good time. 
Um, I, you know, some really good times to make sure you capitalize on is Friday because everyone's done with their week and they're probably not all the happiest about their jobs. Uh, although they are happy that it's the weekend, they're probably not happy with the job that they just had to be done with for the last week. And the other time, good time is when they start Monday morning, you know, they go back to work, they're not happy. Uh, they're, they're thinking about options. They're kind of exploring. So you want to make sure that you're hitting, you know, I, we encourage every day cause it's good habits. You know, just like Maxwell says, if you, you don't want to have uh, you know, uphill, you know, uphill success with downhill habits. So we, we try to encourage that, make it a part of your process, you know, get up in the morning, check it, do it at six, seven o'clock at night before you kind of shut it down, check it, kind of respond and make it a part of your day so that you don't become overwhelmed with all this stuff that needs to be done. Awesome. Well, unless there's anything else, I mean, this is really, really helpful. And I know you guys are having a lot of success with it. So I appreciate you taking some time out and, and going over this um, yeah. for the benefit of everyone else. So appreciate that. Not a problem. I'm sure we'll do more, uh, more of them to come and more detailed as we get through it, but it's a pretty basic setup and it's extremely effective.